the idea that that we created ISIS by going into Iraq, that's also just um, delusional. Look, ISIS got started through funding from our friends and allies, because as people will tell you in the region, if you want somebody who will fight to the death against Hezbollah, you don't put out a recruiting poster and say, you know, sign up for us, or we're going to make a better world. You go after zealots and you go after these religious fundamentalists. That's who fights Hezbollah. I mean, it was very clear what we were, what we were going to face. Well, I admire your frankness very on the subject. Very clear what we were going to let face. Me, let me just, to one before we move on, just to clarify once more, you are basically saying that even in government at the time, you knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it. But who wasn't listening? I think the, I think the administration. So the administration turned a blind eye to your analysis? I don't know the if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. We have been fighting alongside al-Qaeda, fighting alongside ISIS. ISIS is now emboldened in two countries. But here's the anomaly. We're with ISIS in Syria. We're on the same side of the war. We have gone full circle from opposing al-Qaeda, which sent 3,000 Americans to a flaming death on 9-11, complete circle to where we now supply them, we arm them, we finance them, and it's all coming uh, with, with the approval of the highest authorities in the United States government. Yes. There are no moderate rebels. The notion is a fantasy. They do not exist. Mm -hmm. And yet, I think uh, yesterday, President, or, or rather Secretary, Kerry was, was out there saying, well, we've got to help the moderate rebels. The moderate rebels are Al-Qaeda, who flew the jets into the Twin Towers, and today, these are the moderates. Right. Not they already reject that. ISIL. Do you know any major Arab ally that embraces ISIL? I know major Arab allies who fund them. Yeah. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes, in Anbar province. Many of you are asking me why on earth am I voting or planning to vote for Hillary Clinton? Hillary Clinton is described already. The meeting in the White House over two years ago, everyone in the national security team recommended uh, arming ISIS. مسؤولين امريكيين دبلوماسيين عسكريين وامنيين موجود هذا في وسائل العالم شو عم بيقولوا نحن عملنا داعش لنقدر <تصفيق> Iraq is, it was the perfect test case for to, to create a, a vibrant democracy in the heart of the Arab world. I mean, this is a basically educated population. Um, we completely underestimated the level of sectarianism there. Um, but again, that's is easily as, as ascribed to incompetence. I mean, Do you think that the U.S. or U.N. forces should have moved into Baghdad? No. Uh, once you got to Iraq and took it over and took down Saddam Hussein's government, then what are you going to put in its place? That's a very volatile part of the world, and, and if you take down the central government in Iraq, you can easily end up seeing pieces of Iraq fly off. Uh, part of it uh, the Syrians would like to have to the west. Uh, part of eastern Iraq uh, the Iranians would like to claim fought over for eight years. Uh, in the north, you've got the Kurds. And, the Kurds spin loose and join with the Kurds in Turkey, then you threaten the territorial integrity of Turkey. It's a, it's a quagmire if you go that far and try to take out <laughs> Iraq. If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. So my bias toward Israel, whenever you're talking about uh, the conflict between Israel and her neighbors,
Yes. There have been reports that Israel has been treating wounded Syrian rebel fighters in its yes. hospitals yes. on the border, yes. including fighters from Nusra Front, yes. uh, which is, of course, the Al-Qaeda proxy in Syria. Um, do those reports worry you that Israel's helping wounded Al-Qaeda-aligned fighters? As I said before, in a different context, it's always useful also to deal with your enemies in a humane way. And I think that when you have people who are wounded and you can deal with them in a humane way, the considerations as to whether to take them in are not simply whether it's politically uh, useful or whether it's politically So it's purely humanitarian, you say? So there's no tactical or political or strategic... I didn't say there's no tactical. I said the main consideration, Fine. the immediate consideration Fine. is humane. But the tactical issues involved, I mean, you know better than me the phrase blowback. You don't think there's going to be blowback against Israel if you get into bed with an, a group like Nusra Front? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be blowback. Why? Because I think that, the, unfortunately, the rules of the game in Syria are such that you can do anything that is not, able, is not possible to be done anywhere else. Yeah, I think people said that in Afghanistan too. Would you also treat Hezbollah fighters? No. I would not treat... Have you not just contradicted what you told me no, 60 I'm seconds not ago? No, I'm But humanely no, treating no, your enemies? No, no. I think as far as Hezbollah uh, uh, fighters are concerned, with them we have a different uh, account. So let me be clear, you would, you, you're happy to treat Al-Qaeda fighters, we have, but not Hezbollah we fighters? Have, we have a different account with Hezbollah, a totally different account, because Hezbollah has carried out the type of uh, actions against us which pre preclude us from going into what the Al-Qaeda has done. Al-Qaeda, to the best of my recollection, has up to now not attacked Israel. But has attacked your number one ally and protector and sponsor in the United States of America. There is a quote-unquote war on terror being going on for 15 years. The war in Syria is a war to expand Israel. ISIS stands for Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. You can Google it. There's a video from years ago where a reporter actually brought this up. You tell the story about how you tried to find out what the what they call the Mossad when they deal with uh, I publicly? A, I thought it was a reasonable question, but the trouble is uh, you can't pick up the phone book. There's no uh, Langley in, the, in Israel that you can look up you know, CIA, or in our case, uh, the Mossad. We thought we should ask, what shall we call it in English? You can translate the Hebrew words, as I said, Mossad is Institute. But when they write a letter to their friends in the CIA or the British intelligence, what do they call themselves? It took a while. Uh, it was a matter of asking the prime minister's spokesman. The best you could do, because officially uh, the Mossad is under the prime minister's office. And uh, I think he sort of wondered why you want to know and all that, so he explained. And he came up with uh, the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. I mean, if it were to have initials, it would be ISIS. Wake up. Uh, that ISIL, ISIS, is uh, funded by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, mm. the governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Now, th this is a, I actually, I think this is the most significant email in the whole collection.